our stone pad finishes here and as you can see you've got the wheels of the lorry so they're now being able to tip this is the last this chunk here is our latest delivery and as you can see Jack is getting some way up the heap now getting right up this sort of height and as you can see we're pushing it off the back now so the idea is the more of a ski slope where he can keep pushing it up And uh, we've got some loads tipped over so that would be a 20 ton load delivered by a tractor and trailer and as you can see we're quite a bit higher than that now the they are coming from different sources and you do get the occasional bit of plastic like this this last load has definitely not been quite as clean. The wheat's looking all right though. It's looking nice and clean. Wednesday the 4th of June and we just got a few spots of rain here but we're out in a field of spring wheat this is uh, being grown on a seed contract for uh, milk oat seeds so this is a actually a field of lennox so let me take you and give you a closer look so as you can see we are just coming out in flag leaf and pretty pleased it's a 32 hectare block this it's looking looking really quite nice considering it's not what was planned for this field so it's quite a strong field but down the bottom in those trees is a stream it gets quite uh, wet as a result last year this field grew beans winter beans who was actually our best yielding crop of winter beans but the issue is that we couldn't get in to drill it in the autumn so we transferred the wheat elsewhere and we put the uh, this down to spring wheat so pleased with progress so far nice and clean fingers crossed uh, we get the seed contract morning everybody i'm just out here crop walking and i just wanted to share something before i go any further so this is a field of wheat and i'm walking down the tram line and all i've seen one slug here and then yeah another one there and actually i've just come from the field next door where we've just put on some wild bird mix and there it was quite noticeable i just got out of my truck and straight away i saw a big slug bit of nibbling on this one and right next door a culprit probably not the one but uh Definitely need to send some slug pellets out here. Get you later, mate. Now, these types of slugs are probably not the ones that do the damage. They're the little grey field slug. But it's just an indication that this is ideal slug conditions. This sort of steady rain after this protracted dry period, they've all come to the surface. So just a sort of nod to the John Kemp sort of keeping your eyes open in regenerative farming i'm out here looking for something else I want to go and see how barren dodgy bit of wheat in the middle of this field but actually seen the slugs I've just seen another one there's another one the note to self definitely we need to get out and protect those wild bird food covers otherwise all of the susceptible stuff like mustard 
and clovers will all get eaten. It's, just, it's quite obvious, but applying the lessons from one crop to another one is uh, a good way of leveraging your time. Bloody hell, I've just seen another one. And the final one there. And there. So if I'm seeing this many slugs just in one row, what does this mean for the whole field? And more importantly, the new crop next door. So uh, we're out in the wheat today. This was the wheat we reviewed throughout the year. We had the variable emergence in the middle for whatever reason. Um, we've been talking to our agronomist about this on a wider level. Interestingly, uh, also been reading a book recently, Weeds and What They Tell Us. And uh, let's just pan around to this light green section and let me show you. So as you can see on the outside it's it's all right but as you come across more and more weed uh creeping this one is this but the point is uh this thistle has a very good tap root so uh according to the book the lesson it's teaching you is that uh there's a compaction problem and that uh, it's here to punch a hole through the compaction and bring nutrients to the surface. Um, now, the relevance for us is, I don't actually mind this thistle too much because it's busting through any compaction and working, creating a root zone. So that's all right, but as we walk across the field, we can come across our old friend black bar. Here we go, because it opens up a bit. Now, I have been waiting for the black grass. As you can see, they are still in a flowering phase. As I picked those, did you see the, see that? The cloud of uh, pollen coming off it. Okay, so, um, when it's in flowering, that's sort of your last opportunity it's not, they're not behaving. there we go, a little puff there there we go okay, so they're in flowering and they haven't produced viable seeds yet and in fact, this is a classic mechanism for developing glyphosate resistance. Treating the plant when it's only just marginally susceptible so that uh, actually it has quite a good chance of surviving. So it then generates seeds which are even, even if it's just 1%, 1% better at surviving glyphosate, then those seeds grow they're already sort of only 99% susceptible to glyphosate. Then, you sp then if you spray it late again, then it's another 1%. So it's like 98% susceptible to glyphosate. Generation, generation, generation on, you've got a serious problem. So the objective is never to create a situation where by you're selecting for marginal susceptibility really what you want is is 100% kill or not at all so why are we talking about this well because we're greedy farmers and we're trying to grab as much crop as possible so can I wait long enough that I can combine this wheat and spray the black grass off at the last moment uh, it will kill the wheat but I've also got some seed there so I can grab it in reality this would be a classic situation where I've got a distribution of wheat heads in here. There is some wheat, but there's also a lot of weed. So I don't want to put this through my combine. It'll properly kill it. There you go. There's a lovely sort of black grass head there. My combine won't like this anyway. So could I, I'll have to spray it in order that it will go through a combine. 
I often use the analogy that combines were developed in North America where it's, you know, in the Great Plains where it's very dry and so generally uh, they like dry material flowing through them. What they don't like is a load of green weeds like this. It's a very maritime climate problem. So combines don't like it. So you get rounded by spraying it with glyphosate, dries the dries the crop off, helps it th flow through the combine. Also, the, when the, the crop is squeezed inside the combine, moisture can be transferred from the green crop to your dry wheat crop, increasing the moisture content of your grain, which is not something you want. So it's another reason. So drying the crop and feeding and combine, the workings of a combine are the two main reasons. So that was the reason why we want to try and take it as close to harvest as possible. In reality, there, there's too much weed. Let's kill the crop off. Let's plant a cover crop. Let's get the process started again. So you take a financial hit, but you get a clean start and you stop the black grass seeding. So in this particular case, we will probably spray it off in the next week, assuming the weather plays ball, and then come back and top it so that the black grass doesn't get a chance to generate viable seeds. So it's flowering now, you kill it during flowering. It still takes two weeks, 10, um, 10 days to two weeks to generate a seed head. So that's about the time that it takes the glyphosate to properly kill the crop. So the black grass has got momentum for generating those seed heads. What you don't want to do is allow that momentum to carry on enough that you generate a seed head. So you spray it off, give it a 28, 48, 24, 48 hours for the glyphosate to work through the plant, get into the roots, At which point the plant is going to die anyway. It is committed to dying. But what you don't want to do is let that seed head to develop. So any time after that, before the seed head generates, we'll be through here with a topper to top it off and really punish my bank account. So that is our plan here. I was trying to hope that the area was gonna be different from uh, what we identified in the spring, but really I think we're on for the same area as we were then. So. Uh, let's see how that develops going forward. Right, so we're going to take a line from the bottom of this valley, capture where that short work ends, so panning across, trying to, where you can see this changing green colour away from the heads up to those willow trees. There, not, so we'll pick up the willow tree, but that horse chestnut is all right. And then we're gonna go all the way back to the power lines over there. The power lines.